Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream with an update video here on this Thursday morning, February 2nd, 2023. It's about 11.25 a.m. here along the West Coast where we're expecting a little bit more rain later on this evening. Uh, latest quake shows a 1.9 up, in, up into the Alaska area. Uh, we did see that area get hit uh, overnight as well as a region over here around the uh, Caribbean plate as well. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the earthquake map. Starting up here in Alaska. I remember I mentioned last night about, uh, uh, well, if I had to say anything odd about any area on the map, it would be up here around the Cook Inlet. Uh, as we did see quite a bit of uptick in smaller quakes within this area. Well, pretty much right in this same zone, we did see a larger quake kick up last night. Actually, early this morning, it looks like a 5.0 coming in somewhat deep at 111 kilometers into this area uh, the alaska region still showing some uh, uptick and movement across areas of, uh, north of anchorage and up around denali so i think that's the, very possible we could be seeing a little bit of further activity ramping up um, not only around the cook Inlet area uh, but potentially down here along the subduction zone level of the uh, pacific and the north american plate uh, also over here around the Caribbean plate, uh, we did see, uh, well, the swarming has stalled, uh, stalled for now. Typical swarming around the Puerto Rico area has came to a halt. It has been over the past couple days. And when that happens, we do see these little odd earthquakes take place in various areas. Yesterday, it was around the Dominican Republic. Today, over here near St. Uh, St. John's area, Barbuda area, 5.0 coming in about five o'clock in the morning along the subduction zone here at 23 kilometers deep. This area has seen quite a bit of uptick and movement over the last couple days. Um, I still think this is a zone to watch as well. Uh, here off the coast of Guatemala, most of this activity here from yesterday, we did see one further quake about uh, about an hour or so ago into the, um, it looks like it's on land right there at the coast, north of San Jose, Guatemala area. 4.7 at 77 kilometers deep. Also, uh, some other smaller quakes around the region uh, not showing up on the USGS map. Notice quite a few threes and twos around the Costa Rica area. Uh, further down south into the South America region here. Got uh, a little bit of activity kicking off after midnight. Most of it, though, prior um, at... Um, prior earlier uh, looks like we did have one 4.6 at uh, about three o'clock in the morning and for as smaller quakes go there's not a whole lot listed up here today uh, for the South America region uh, tapering off of activity across the Indonesia area although we're still seeing a little bit of activity but nothing like what we've seen in the last week or so uh, last couple weeks following that seven pointer that kicked off out here uh, and a whole bunch of aftershocks as seems to uh, come to a halt and we should be watching for migration I did mention yesterday to watch areas north here around the Japan Trench and also areas to the southeast uh, this area around Papua New Guinea has gone quiet but we have seen a little bit of uptick in movement around the Japan area with a couple fours up here USGS reporting one of those fours um, that one from yesterday so they still haven't put up the new four pointer that's a little bit further down south along the uh, japan trench a little bit of activity definitely ramping up there um also into uh looks like the northern end of the java trench seen a 3.4 pretty deep one 165 kilometers deep and uh, also a 4.7 coming in uh, early this morning it looks like 62 kilometers deep here along this area so things starting to ramp up slightly within this very quiet zone that we've been watching for a little while uh, around the Mediterranean region quite a few twos and threes across the area today uh, even had a 3.1 up here off the coast of let's see where this is at uh, just off the coast of Italy there 3.1 uh, coming in earlier this morning time period and uh, let's see, the Atlantic Ocean, fairly calm, fairly quiet. 
All right, checking out the West Coast. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot popping off here, but we're going to go ahead and zoom in in a little bit better picture and uh, see what we have up here. Uh, still seeing a little bit of activity at the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone, including two earthquakes within the last hour near the uh, Ocotillo Wells area. Largest looks to be a 1.4. No major adjustments right now around the San Andreas fault, fault. Excuse me. Just got a hiccup there all of a sudden. Uh, a little bit of movement stretching over here to the west along the Elsinore fault system. Getting a little bit of swarming kicking off here. Um, just without, within that uh, southern segment there. A little bit of activity down here around the Salton Sea, but this was from yesterday. Uh, no further activity to note here in this area. And up on the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, a couple smaller quakes from uh, yesterday. Nothing popping off here overnight. Ridgecrest area. Looks like we did see a couple smaller uh, microquakes within the vicinity of Ridgecrest uh, early this morning so far, but nothing major popping off yet. Northern California. Things are still popping around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Very typical of that area with the uh, hydrothermal operations there. 2.9 well off the coast of Northern Cal, back into the Gorda Ridges. Now that uh, earthquake striking just before midnight. Uh, we st still getting, uh, we're still getting some tremor activity out here from yesterday. Uh, let's check out what that was. I believe most of it though was up north into an area just pretty much just due east of that 2.9 today or last night I should say, this trimmer activity occurring into the southern branch, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. We'll watch that today for uh, some further trimmer and further subsequent earthquake activity. Pacific Northwest, a uh, handful of uh, explosions, query blasts, and uh, some very small microquakes around the vicinity. Nothing major popping off there currently. And uh, look at Yellowstone. Uh, doesn't look like there's too much, so just want to verify here real quick and see what we have going on. Um, a little bit of an earthquake there. It looks like within the last 20 minutes or so, I uh, noticed this earthquake signature right here. Looks like a double tap earthquake. Can't uh, try to see exactly where this may have struck at. Looks like it could be potentially down around the Idaho area or further west of this region that doesn't look like localized seismic activity here to Yellowstone so it's hard to say exactly where that's at and it's not it's definitely not going to be the point nine here that was from yesterday this activity is more uh, localized into this area and I'm sure they'll get to it here uh, them meaning the USGS soon um, let's see, not a whole lot popping off across the southern plains. I know there's some ice and stuff out there. Oh, some skating rinks, I should say. Those public streets are uh, looking pretty slick out there around Ardmore last night and other areas of Oklahoma. 1.7 over here near Tiptonville, Tennessee. That's a portion of the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone. One little earthquake reported early this morning. Nothing major, though, going on for now in that area. All right, uh, let's see. New Zealand can't can't uh, forget the New Zealand area. 4.9 coming in here. That one early this morning. Looks like about 10 kilometers deep. Uh, North Island area. Let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick. Stand by for just a second. While I get this up and running, strong. they call this a strong earthquake, 4.86 kilometers um, deep. You can see there on the map where that uh, earthquake struck there. Uh, let's see what we got here for some... Uh, I'm not going to sign up there. Definitely not going to sign up for that. <laughs> um... Let me check out the earthquakes uh, drums here. Kind of, kind of want to see how this earthquake showed up. I mean, it's a pretty strong earthquake, I guess. Four point eight. It did show up across uh, a good majority of the seismograph drums in the New Zealand area, and again, going to show up strongest 
across the area where the epicenter struck looks like around this station here uh, there is some aftershock activity occurring following that 4.8 notice these uh, very small quakes and you know those are definitely visible on the seismographs I hear a helicopter let's go over here to the all magnitudes kind of kind of wanting to see if they're counting any of these um, doesn't look like it within the epicenter maybe a couple of these there's a 1.9 uh, but following that, uh, yeah, there's a couple being reported, 2.1, 1.9, while wow, that helicopter's close. I'm sure you guys heard that. That thing flew right over my house. Yeah, but there's a, looks like there's a few uh, reported aftershocks here following that uh, 4.8. Again, that's a relatively shallow earthquake in that area. Um, let's see what we got here for the, the volcanic drums. I want to see if this is uh, there's gonna there's that 4.8 again. Not really seeing any unusual sh uh, swarms <laughs> swarms at the uh, volcanoes. Goodness, that's a new one for me. Yeah, but uh, either way, 4.8 showing up pretty nicely there. In the uh, New Zealand area, it doesn't look like there's uh, a little bit of activity working uh, its way. I should say not working its way up north. It's been working its way down south as far as the migration of pressure goes. We've been kind of watching that here over the last couple days with some deeper movement here into the Kermadec Trench area, some shallower earthquake activity down south into New Zealand and there's a lot there's a looks like there's some further new earthquake activity with a 4.2 let me see what the USGS is reporting here they've been a little spotty with a uh, now these guys are reporting it as a 4.9 but there is a 4.2 somewhere up here into the Kermadec trench area we've seen that on the globe a uh, fairly recent earthquake it looks like more recent than that 4.9 that struck North Island. And this one deep, 128 kilometers into the Kermadec Trench, 4.2. Uh, so activity definitely worth watching here today uh, as we um, get some of these deeper quakes followed up. Uh, kind of a bouncing back effect here of shallow and deeper earthquakes around North Island, New Zealand. We'll watch that zone closely today. Uh, not for certain if I have a New Zealand station up or not, do I? I do. I've got that one up. So that's in the... Uh, uh, not for sure exactly where that's at. But uh, Yellowstone there. A little bit of an earthquake right there in Yellowstone. I wonder if that's the one that we were looking at. Or maybe something new popping off. Yeah, but uh, yeah, as far as any major swarm goes there at Yellowstone, there's not a whole lot currently, but you never know. Could speak one into existence here as we're uh, kind of chatting about it. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Space weather activity. Man, do, uh, my books are packed today as uh, far as schoolwork goes again. It's starting off with a bang this semester. Uh, not a whole lot here. Solar weather activity, as far as the flaring goes, a current lurk, lurk, a current look. Man, I'm coming up with some, some uh, new words out here. But I guess we could say we're lurking at the uh, sunspots out here. This one here, we were kind of chatting, chatting about last night. Looking about, uh, about the same, as far as the complex structure. We may have a little bit of growth here within the sunspot. We'll watch. And around the bend here, northeastern limb of the sun, got to watch these two sunspots. It looks like, uh, even though they're very small, looks like they may be growing in the um, instability department. Looks like they may be uh, trying to get their act together. So we'll watch these uh, these two sunspots up here, and then also, of course, this one that's uh, going to be facing into the Earth view here pretty soon for some potential flaring. Right now, 75% chance of a C-flare, M-flare at 10, 1% chance for X-flare. 
Uh, no major auroras expected as far as the three-day forecast goes. A little bit of unsettled conditions up there currently right now around northern Russia and our Antarctica area. Uh, Greenland and Iceland area could be seeing a little bit of uh, of the green skies tonight. All right, folks, I'm going to get busy on my schoolwork here. I'll be off on the side and, of course, uh, watching the activity out here today as, uh, you know, it's obviously shown some uptick in certain regions worth mentioning. Uh, the Alaska region, for one, New Zealand, and around the Caribbean plate all showing increasing seismic activity here over the past 24 hours. Uh, but I think if... If I had to call it here, far as a larger quake coming, um, you know, there's there's many different zones that are uh, overdue for big earthquakes. Uh, but you know, if you if you look at these regions that have seen uptick in movement over the past um, couple days or so, you know, all the activity around the Maluka Sea, now activity uh, back building over here around New Zealand, Kermadec Trench, Tonga Trench. That does leave, you know, a big, huge gap in between these two areas. And the westward plate movement is almost always consistent within this area. So we could be looking at a broad area of some potential larger scale movement if uh, things don't build up enough here for a larger quake around the uh, New Zealand area. So we'll kind of watch this hot spot area today uh, for some movement. Alrighty, have a good one folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Um, stay safe out there.